Hello guys, it is Chest here and I'm back with another video and today's video is based on the King's Gambit. So, let's dive right into it. The King's Gambit is a very aggressive gambit which is part of collection of openings known as the King's Pawn openings. Here, the players play the normal e4 and e5. Grabbing hold of the center and then white strikes the center with the move f4. Now what this does for white is that it attacks the center and it also deflects the black pawn from the center and later white can play moves like d4 to establish a strong center and have a great grip on the game. But this also causes weaknesses for white as the white overexposes his king over this diagonal and black can later play moves like queen to h4 check and exploit the weakness of this diagonal. Here, black can either accept the gambit by playing e takes f4 or black can either decline the gambit by playing something like d6 or knight to f6 or something else. If black accepts the gambit by playing e takes f4, then it's very important for white to play knight to f3 so as to stop this queen to h4 check idea. This is a very critical square which can cause problems to white in many different ways. Now white plays knight to f3 and black can then develop his own pieces accordingly and black can also play his bishop to stop this king from castling but the main motive of white here is to play something like this and black plays this and to move the bishop out and castle in the long run and white can also take back the gambited pawn with the bishop and then the material is equal and white has lead in development due to the gambit that he played but black also has very big counter chances here he can also <clears throat> decline the gambit with something like the Fogbier counter gambit which is played with the move d5 in the second move. Now here the main motive of the Fogbier counter gambit is that if white accepts the pawn then he just close the center with the move e4. What this does is that it blocks the white from bringing his knight to f3 as the pawn controls this square and the black can lead with development and this will turn out to be a greater use of black so this gambit it can be countered by this counter gambit and this is very helpful for black but white's main motive in this game is to castle his king and bring the rook to the open f file and then attack the king by the weakest f7 square suppose in a normal game if black accepts the gambit then white plays knight f3 black then develops his pieces then white plays bishop c4 black also brings his bishop out and then white castles now this rook is very helpful against this now as we can see that the bishop and the rook are both eyeing the f7 square and this can be very annoying for black when the knight moves and the pawn is taken by the bishop if you look have a look further in the game then black can take and white can take back with the queen now this further intensifies the pressure on the f7 square as this queen rook battery is very strong along the f7 square. Now black can like develop his pieces and white will claim this pawn and then there, it is very hard for black to stop this f7 square from being attacked. Black will have to play something like queen to e7 or knight to h6 or he can also play this knight to e 5 attacking this bishop and also defending against this threat but still white is better in this chances though his pieces are undeveloped here but white will be able to take advantage of this position and later develop his pieces to the natural squares and then later attack black with all the pieces and black is in very much trouble if he does not play against this opening correctly. So that's it guys, I'll be back with new chess videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. If you enjoyed this video 
and like learning chess then please subscribe to the channel and till then remember you're not blessed you're just